Good morning, everyone. Uh, today is Tuesday, June 20th, 2023. We're here for the hearing examiner hearings in council chambers and, of course, the city of Cape Coral. Before we start our hearings today, I want to thank the Cape Coral government for the celebration of life of a city attorney, Dolores Menendez, last weekend. Dolores uh, Menendez was a very remarkable attorney, spent virtually her entire career representing the city of Cape Coral. I met uh, Attorney Menendez back in the 1990s over a uh, project some of you might remember as the Midpoint Bridge. And at that point, it carried a little bit of controversy, or maybe I'm underestimating that. Um, she was with the Cape, I was with the Lee County Attorney's Office, and uh, my initial encounters with her was that she was very professional, very feisty, and totally dedicated to the city of Cape Coral. In the intervening years since then, um, I had other uh, collegial encounters with her, and, and my initial impression of her in those three regards continued to be the case and continues up to this very year when, uh, when unfortunately, we lost, we lost her um, to, to, uh, to other events. Um, so um, I want to thank the city for what was really a absolutely wonderful celebration of life, and um, and I know she will be terribly missed by the city and the city attorney's office and staff and those of us out here in the community who had the great good fortune to uh, to be colleagues with her. So with those initial comments, I'm calling the hearings to order. Before we actually start our hearings, I have a few initial comments that I'd like to make. I'd like to introduce our process. Our process is a little bit different than that followed by other governments. In our process, the clerk will read the introduction to the case. The clerk will swear in anyone who is testifying. City staff will then testify as to compliance with public notice. The applicant is required to go first and present their entire case. City staff goes second and presents their case. Public comment is next. If you're here for public comment, please make sure that your comments are comprehensive because once public comment is closed, it will not be reopened. We do not have a time limit on public comment, so you have an opportunity, if you choose, to say whatever you want in the time frame you think is appropriate. Following the closure of public comment, the applicant will respond to questions and make any final comments. Staff will do the same, and then the hearing will be concluded. If you have a cell phone with you at this time, please turn it off or silence it and take any cell phone conversations outside the room if possible. If you wish to have private conversations, please move away from the speaker's lectern so we do not accidentally record your conversation. If your conversation is recorded, it becomes part of the public record at that time, whether or not it's a private conversation. If you have comments to make, please come to the microphone so we can properly record your testimony. All testimony must be under oath. Members of the public are requested to go to the podium uh, to my left, your right. It has the same video and audio capability as the uh, podium, which is immediately in front of me. Um, anyone who provides testimony other than the applicant and staff is requested to fill out a public participation card so we can properly spell your name. If you wish a copy of the hearing examiner recommendation or order, as the case may be, please also provide your email contact information. If you have not signed up to speak prior to this time, that's okay. Um, during public comment, I will ask if there's anyone else who wishes to speak, and you can choose at that time to come forward or not as you, as you deem appropriate. With those initial comments, I'm turning uh, the uh, hearing over to the clerk to call the first case. Thank you very much. <coughs> Case number VAC 22-000027, address 113 and 117 El Dorado Parkway West, applicant William Cronin. The applicants request the vacation of 2,000 square feet of street right-of-way and underlying easements and the vacation of 354 square feet of adjacent public utility easements located on the North Road segment at the eastern end of El Dorado Parkway West, between lots 47 and 48, block 190, Cape Coral, Unit 3, and lots 49 through 51, block 190, Cape Coral, Unit 3. Any persons giving testimony today, if you are able, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you, do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Good morning, Mr. White. 
Good morning, Madam Hearing Examiner. For the record, Patrick Carlton White, Senior Planner, Kip Coyle Planning Department. Uh, at this time, I would ask to be recognized as an expert witness for, uh, for this case due to my credentials on record uh, at the City Clerk's Office and previous testimony at hearings such as this. Thank you. We need to make uh, sure the public uh, notice was properly given, and then I will address that request. Public notice was properly given. We posted uh, signs on the property. We advertised the case in the news press and uh, sent out mailings to any property owner within 500 feet of the subject vacation area. Thank you. I will find the proper notice was given, and at this time I will, I will recognize you as a subject matter expert regarding the issues that are before us today based upon your qualifications, which are on file with the city clerk's office, and also based on your testimony regarding issues that are similar to the issues confronting us today in this particular case. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have the applicant up, please, sir? Thank you. Good morning. Could you state your name for the record, please? Good sir? morning. My name is Bill Cronin. Morning. This morning. is your opportunity to present whatever you wish to present regarding your request for a vacation. All right. I'd like to, I'd like to go through um, the PowerPoints that was actually prepared by Patrick and with, with an input from myself and Margaret. Um, Margaret, my wife, is behind me. Um, we went through. We've gone through this. This has been quite a long process for us to, 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 to actually get this vacation, and so we're very pleased to be here. Um, we own both properties, 113 and 117, and what we want to do is we want to expand the driveway, essentially, and make it more beautiful at, at that bottom end. It's a real ugly little hammerhead at the end of the properties, and it kind of interrupts both properties, and we're going to put, put nice um, landscaping down there to make it, make it look nicer. It's, it's a real simple project for us. Um, we've gone through um, all the land development um, pieces, and we don't see any problems. Um, I can read them out for you if you like, but I think you have this piece of paper, maybe. <laughs> I, I think I do. OK. Um, I, I don't know what else I'm supposed to say, to tell you the truth. <laughs> You're doing great, actually, and thank you. I'm, I'm assuming you don't uh, come to zoning hearings particularly often, so... Uh, no, I so do not. I, I understand what you're saying. So what some people choose to do, if you agree with um, the staff report that Mr. White has prepared, uh, you can incorporate that into your presentation today. That will take all of the, um, all the requirements um, under the city rules and incorporate them into, into um, your request today. I agree with everything that Patrick has done, and um, I agree with all the, the, um, the requirements and the conditions uh, that we are supposed to do after we get approval. Um, we agree to do all that. We agree to move the storm drainage um, piece. But the magic words are, do you, do you wish to incorporate them into your presentation today? I wish to incorporate them into my presentation today. Well done. Uh, and um, is there anything else you'd like to say at this time? No. Okay. And I will ask you to come up after Mr. White has testified because we will then address what Mr. White has actually testified to today. Okay? Great. That sounds great. Thank you. Uh, does your wife wish to testify? You mentioned. No, I don't think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mr. White, good morning again. Good morning again, Madam Hearing Examiner. I have a uh, <clears throat> brief PowerPoint presentation for you regarding the subject case VAC 2227. The applicants you've uh, now met, William and Margaret Cronin, this uh, vacation is located on a hammerhead or a um, dead end right of way located between two properties, 113 El Dorado Parkway West and 117 El Dorado Parkway West. The applicants are requesting to vacate 2,000 square feet of street right away and the underlying easements and 354 square feet of platted easements lying adjacent to lots 49 and 50. This is a zoomed out aerial showing the location of the site. I've identified the two properties in red and thrown a uh, <clears throat> kind of candy cane colored uh, 500 foot buffer to indicate where we did I'd, um, send out our mailings to. The future land use map on the left identifies 
uh, the subject properties as having a single family future land use designation as well as all surrounding properties. Similarly, the zoning map on the right shows them as zoned R1 as well as all surrounding properties. Exhibit A within the packet is a uh, sketch from, um, uh, from Mr. Mould, uh, a professional surveyor depicting the vacation area. I have depicted that on this aerial in blue. Exhibit B is a depiction of the right of, excuse me, of the PUE vacation. Exhibit C is a PUE reservation. Now you'll notice this is a little different from what we usually see, which is where we split the property down the middle. In this instance, all of the properties go into the property on the right. So this PUE reservation in orange looks more cream on my, my computer here, but it's the, you can clearly see it, it's the one on the left side, reestablishes the six foot perimeter PUE. The application was initiated by the applicants, William and Margaret Cronin, who own both properties. The, as I mentioned, the properties have a future land use of single family and are zoned single family residential. The vacation enlarges the area of the eastern property. Uh, when uh, in analyzing this case, uh, staff looks at a number of different criteria. The first one questions whether the plat easements and rights of way are required by the city for future transportation access water management or public utility purposes, and staff found that the right-of-way is at the end of El Dorado Parkway West, constitutes a dead-end street between the applicant's sites. The city has a stormwater inlet and a drainage pipe, which will be relocated to accommodate the proposed vacation. The applicant will, re will relocate the inlet and pipe to the city right-of-way in coordination with the Public Works Department as depicted in Exhibit D within your packet. Staff also found that the platted PUEs in lots 49 and 50 will be vacated. These easements are not needed. The city will retain easements sufficient for maintaining a perimeter easement around each of the sites as amended uh, with a minimum width of six feet. Question two uh, asks whether any required easements are necessary to accommodate the vacation of any plat easement or right of way and staff found that the platted easements that will be vacated or not needed. The city will retain a perimeter easement that will be sufficient for maintaining a continuous six foot wide PUE around each site. Item three is asks whether or if alternative routes are required or available that do not cause adverse impacts to surrounding areas. Staff found that the existing cul-de-sacs will not be impacted by this vacation request. No alternate route is required and this vacation will not have any adverse impacts to the surrounding area. Question four asks, if the closure of a right-of-way negatively affects areas utilized for vehicles to turn around and exit an area, staff found the vacation will not impede the ability of vehicles to turn around and exit the area using the existing cul-de-sac. And question five asks, whether local utility providers have given consent to the vacation of the plat, easements, and rights-of-way, the local utility providers may require additional easements or relocation of existing utilities to complete the vacation and staff found that all three utility providers have provided letters of no objection. LCEC requires a continuous easement provided around the perimeter of each site. Century Link and Comcast stipulate that if facilities are found or damaged, the applicant will bear the cost of relocation and repair. Staff then looked at whether or not this request was com uh, in compliance with the comprehensive plan and found the uh, request generally uh, compatible with policy 1.15 uh, which identifies the R1 district as consistent with the single family future land use classification and consistent with policy 1.15.A both sides uh, being developed with a density less than the maximum 4.4 dwelling units per acre which is permitted within the single family future land use classification. As such, staff is recommending approval with multiple conditions. I will read those into the record momentarily. <clears throat> the vacation of the 2,000 square foot of right of way shall be consistent with the sketch and accompanying legal description prepared by Harris Jorgensen LLC, dated March 15, 2002, entitled Exhibit A. The vacation of 354 square feet of platted easements in lots 50, 49 and 50, block 190 shall be consistent with the sketch and legal description prepared by Harris Jorgensen LLC dated November 15th, 2002, entitled Exhibit B. 
The city shall retain easements sufficient for maintaining a minimum six foot wide public utility and draining easement around the perimeter of each site, generally consistent with the sketch and accompanying legal description prepared by Harrison Jorgensen LLC dated November 15th, 2022, Exhibit C. In the event utilities are found within the vacated area, the owner shall be responsible for bearing the costs for relocating the facilities to a new easement. In the event utilities are damaged during construction activities, the owner shall bear the cost of relocating the utilities to a new easement and repairing said utilities. Condition five, within 180 days, the owners of the site shall remove the existing stormwater inlet located within the vacation area and relocate the inlet into existing city right of way and pipe to and from the new inlet generally as depicted in exhibit D. At the sole discretion of the city, the owner shall grant all necessary easements for any new or modified stormwater system if required. All improvements shall be inspected by the city. The cost of the improvements identified in this condition shall be borne by the owners. Within 180 days of the approval of this vacation request, the owner shall remove the pavement associated with each of the vacated streets that occupy each site. Each area shall be sodded following the removal of this pavement or may be improved as permitted by the land development code. Condition seven, the owner shall pay to the city of Cape Coral the cost of recording this resolution with the office of the Lee County Clerk of Court and condition eight, the city will, shall record this resolution with the office of the Lee County Clerk following the, following the receipt of the recording fees from the owner. Uh, I've received no calls or emails or any public correspondence regarding this case. I will stand by for any questions. Thank you, I have no questions. This is a public hearing. Are there members of the public who wish to have input or testimony today? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the applicant. Sir, would you come up to the microphone, please? You've heard the testimony by Mr. White today regarding your application. Uh, do you agree with that testimony? I do. You wish to incorporate it into your presentation as well? I do. Right. Thank you. Is there any other testimony you'd like to give at this time? No, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. White, I'm assuming the same. You have no other testimony, is that correct? Nothing further, ma'am. Okay, fine, thank you. Um, I will recommend that the uh, requested vacation go forward with the conditions as indicated. Um, I realize that I, I looked at the date on your application. It's been, it's been over a year and I can assure you that uh, my part of this will move forward quickly. I will get my recommendation out, I hope today, possibly tomorrow. But then after the recommendation is issued, uh, it goes to city council. So there'll be another uh, proceeding in front of the city council, just so you understand that part, all right? Um, but I will make the recommendation uh, for approval as requested. Uh, with those comments, I am concluding the hearing at this time and moving on to the second hearing. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Case number RZN22-000012, address 809 Kismet Parkway East, applicant Gulf Coast Closets, LLC. The applicant requests a rezone from the commercial C zoning district to the industrial I zoning district for eight parcels totaling 2.15 acres located along Kismet Parkway. The future land use designation of these parcels was recently amended to mixed use MX. The future land use map amendment and the rezoning will allow the applicant to construct a cabinet manufacturing company at the site. The applicant has the parcels under contract and the final steps for development can proceed if the rezone is approved. Any person giving testimony today. If you are able, please stand and raise your hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Good morning again, Mr. Boyko. Good morning, Madam Hearing Examiner. Before the applicant gives his presentation, I'd like to inform you that this case has been properly advertised. There was a advertisement placed within the local newspaper of circulation. There were letters sent out to residents within 500 feet of the subject site and there was a sign posted on the property and all of this was done 10 days prior to this public hearing. We'll find the proper notice was given. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any other requests to the hearing examiner at this time, Mr. Boyko? Uh, I do not. I will ask the, uh, I will ask to be recognized as an expert witness when I give my presentation. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for your time. 
Um, my name is James Morey. I represent Gulf Coast Closets, LLC. And uh, I want to say, first off, that the staff has been terrific. Uh, they have been thorough. They have been professional and extremely helpful. It's been a little over a year long process. And at each step, they were tremendously helpful. So I wanted to say that. And with that, for that reason, I would like to incorporate the staff report into my presentation. I, I, will, uh, I will so incorporate. Um, and thank you for your comments about staff. We don't, uh, we don't commonly get uh, positive comments. We occasionally get negative comments, sadly enough. But, uh, but it, I'm sure staff appreciates what you're saying. Thank you well, for that. Well, I, I mean it, and thank you. So uh, I represent Gulf Coast Closets, and I, I just want to paint the picture. Gulf Coast Closets is under a contract to purchase these eight adjacent, unde currently undeveloped parcels. And as part of uh, a contingency in the contract was to have it rezoned from commercial to industrial so that they could uh, go forward with their, with their planned use of the property, which is um, to create a, a, a very light industrial uh, assembly plant for their um, cabinets and design closets, um, custom design closet business. And Recently, the property underwent a, a land, a future land use change uh, from commercial professional to, to mixed use. The industrial use would be compatible with that mixed, mixed, uh, mixed use future land use. So eight adj adjacent uh, parcels undeveloped right on Kismet. Um, adjacent to these uh, subject parcels, there's industrial zone land right, right next door. We think it would be uh, compatible not only with the future land use, compatible with the, the current area. Um, there would be no downside. It would uh, lend additional industrial land to, to the city, to the city's in industrial base. Um, there are single family homes uh, across the street from uh, the, the Kismet Parkway. We believe and understand and sympathetic with that, but we do believe that, again, other industrial uses are in, in the neighborhood, in the area, and with um, surely any development requirements would, would include uh, proper landscaping, proper, proper um, uh, setbacks, uh, proper screening, things of that nature. So to the extent that, that that was a concern, I think that can be adequately addressed in the development phase. So we, we would ask, um, we would ask that the uh, rezoning be approved. Thank you. Anything else? No, nothing more. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and of course, you know that uh, rezoning is not conditioned on the particular use. I, I know you know that, so I just want to put that clearly on the record. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. Mr. Boyko, thank you. All right. Good morning once again, Madam Hearing Examiner. Chad Boyko, Principal Planner with the City's Planning Division. Uh, before we begin the presentation, I would ask that I be recognized as an expert witness based upon previous presentations before you and along with my credentials that can be obtained at the city clerk's office. I will find you as, a, as an expert regarding the issues that are addressed in this rezoning application based upon your credentials on file with the city clerk, based upon your testimony regarding uh, regarding issues that are similar to those before us today, and also based upon your very comprehensive efforts in uh, the citywide rezoning that was accomplished several years ago, and which I am still in awe of. That All right, so what we have before you today is RZN 2212. Uh, this is privately initiated. The applicant is Gulf Coast Closets, LLC. Uh, its location is north of Kismet Parkway and east of Andalusia Boulevard. The size is a little over two acres. This is eight abutting parcels. It's located within the transition area of the urban services, the, the designation which can be found within our uh, comprehensive plan, future land use map, which means, and the transition designation means that utilities are available to this site currently. That's water, sewer, and irrigation. And then the applicant's request, we stated earlier, is a rezone from the commercial zoning district to the industrial zoning district. So we have an aerial map here before you. Uh, you can see that the, uh, these are eight abutting parcels that are undeveloped. Directly to the north abutting these eight properties is the Andalusia Industrial Park, which is probably around 80 to 90% built out. Uh, to the east and to the west, there are similar undeveloped properties that are the same size and shape as the eight parcels that are within this site. To the south across Kismet Parkway, there is a collection of some, resi of some, some currently built residential homes 
undeveloped properties, and then at the southeast and southwest corner of Andalusia uh, Boulevard and Kismet Parkway intersection, you have both the gas station and I believe it is a uh, Dollar General retail, retail store. Um, we, it was mentioned earlier by the applicant that the site was recently amended, the future land use of the site was recently amended to the mixed use district. Um, that was done in order to accommodate this rezone to industrial. And then while the rezone does not have bearing on whatever use is eventually developed, they have stated in their letter of intent to give some background information for this. They are looking to build a cabinet manufacturing business uh, that is classified as um, a light industrial use. It's manufacturing. Uh, there are no sort of uh, hazardous materials or smells that would kick it into the heavy manufacturing. It's sort of an assembly use. And the light manufacture, the light industrial use is only really allowed in two zoning districts. One of those is the commercial corridor district, which as you know, is primarily located along Pine Island Road um, and really has to have the Pine Island Road district land use designation for that zoning to be compatible. Um, and this is a little ways removed from Pine Island Road district area and also that kind of frontage. So the only other district that we kind of looked at to see what would be you know, useful there would be the industrial district for their intended use of that cabinet manufacturing business. Uh, so we've got two, two maps here before you. We have the current zoning map and then the proposed zoning map. On the left, you can see that the current zoning of these eight parcels and also the properties that are to the east and to the west and to the south, the current zoning is commercial. And to the north, directly abutting this with the industrial park, is industrial zoning. So on the right-hand side, you can see that, oh, before we talk about the proposed zoning, we mentioned that there are some single-family homes that are located to the south across Kismet Parkway. Uh, while staff recognizes that those are legally non-conforming properties, they are within the commercial district, so there is likely to uh, be some development within that block to the, to the south that will not be residential. It will be sort of another commercial development, unless, of course, it is changed uh, by city council at some point in the future. Um, then the proposed zoning map that you see on the right-hand side of your screen, the proposed zoning of, of the eight lots is to take this to industrial. So we analyze this rezone request for our land development code. There are six standards that we look at when we're looking at rezoning applications from uh, either publicly or privately initiated. Uh, the first standard is whether the proposed zoning district is consistent with the city's comprehensive plan. And then staff finds that the proposed industrial district is compatible with the mixed use future land use. Mixed use future land use allows uh, nearly all zoning districts that we have within the city of Cape Coral to, to be compatible with it. And the industrial district uh, fits in along with that as well. I think it's the ag district that's not allowed in mixed use. Hmm. Yeah, it, it, yeah, we have some sort of niche zoning districts that, um, you know, we have only a couple of things that they're compatible with. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. I was just <laughs> <laughs> the second, second standard is whether the full range of uses allowed within the proposed zone district will be compatible with the existing uses in the area under consideration. Uh, staff notes that the industrial district allows for a variety of industrial uses such as manufacturing, both like sort of light and, light and heavy, uh, research and development businesses, heavy auto repair, it does for allow for, for some storage uses. Uh, staff notes that there is the Andalusia Industrial Park that is located to the, that is developed to the north. And as we mentioned earlier, the majority of that site is currently uh, developed and built out. Uh, there is commercial to the south, east, and west, some of which has been developed, some of which has some older single family homes that have remained in there, and then some of the undeveloped properties. The rezone would allow for industrial use with arterial, arterial road frontage, which is a little unique within the city of Cape Coral. Uh, most of our industrial development is located sort of within its with you know in interior to sort of our commercial intersections and that is done generally because industrial development has uh less stringent development requirements uh which is which is fine for industrial development but normally you try to sort of tuck some of those uses and that that kind of development especially when you're getting into uh, some more of your more intense industrial uses we try to shield those from arterial or roadway frontage um, Uses within the industrial district, you know, can have some sort of deleterious effects, whether it's noise, smell, visual appearance. Uh, for this one in particular, while the use does not have a bearing on a recommendation, they have stated that they're going to do a manufacturing business there. And there are some protections that are also built into the land development code 
with the landscaping and buffering that will be required regardless of what is developed there, whether it's the manufacturing use or whether it's some sort of other industrial use, there will be landscaping buffering that will shield this from the right of, from the right-of-way frontage and provide for a more, uh, it will help for any sort of development that provide uh, visual screening and buffering. The third standard is whether the range of uses allowed in the proposed district will be, will be compatible with existing and potential uses in the area under consideration. Uh, everything that is within all four directions is of a non-residential designation currently. You have the industrial to the north, you have, the, you have commercial to the east, west, and south, and generally what we find is that uh, this is, you know, there's not office, there's not an office zoning, there aren't single family zoning in the nearby area. So anything that is within a couple hundred feet of this site will be commercial in nature and staff finds that the industrial uses will be compatible with that, um, uh, you know, going along with the fact that there is going to be appropriate buffering and screening with a, any proposed development. The fourth standard is whether the proposed district will serve a community need or broader, pu broader public purpose. The city has a documented need for uh, non-residential land, and they, uh, the city also has a need for industrial land. If you look at the two industrial parks that we have in the city, they are nearly built out, and they are almost fully uh, rented or occupied or, or, or leased. There is there's very little vacancy within those industrial areas. Uh, staff finds that you, know, the, you do have intended use. This is only about two acres, but it does add for some additional industrial lands within the city of Cape Coral. Um, you know, whether it's the cabinet manufacturing business that goes in there or some sort of industrial use, sort of any industrial land that uh, we can acquire or bring into the city that can be utilized for the, you know, the various industrial businesses that we have is good for the city, so long as it's in the appropriate locations. Uh, the fifth standard is whether the characteristics of the proposed rezone area are suitable for the uses permitted in the proposed district. Uh, the site has adequate size for industrial development. You're looking at two acres in size. You're not talking about a 10,000 or 15,000 square foot property. Uh, the site would act as sort of an extension of that Andalusia Industrial Park. Uh, you're well separated from any residentially zoned and land used areas. I think you're looking at around five to 600 feet away from those uh, areas that have legally conforming homes and to go along with the land use and the zoning. And the site is also considered an extension of a commercial node at that Andalusia Boulevard and Kismet Parkway intersection. And then the last standard is whether a zoning district other than the district requested will create fewer potential adverse impacts to existing uses in the surrounding area. Uh, staff notes that the uh, MS, M mixed use designation is compatible with nearly every zoning district, which makes this standard a little bit tricky, uh, given that industrial is probably one of, if not the most uh, intensive districts that we have within the city of Cape Coral based upon the uses that are allowed there. Uh, so the easy answer to this is that almost every other district would be less adverse to this. Uh, we have, however, stated that uh, we feel that with the landscaping and buffering standards that are allowed, that we think that, and the fact that it's already, you know, present in a non-residential area, uh, that it won't have sort of that adverse impact unless, as if you were putting industrial into a more uh, into an area where there are more homes and more designated areas for residential develop development. And as we mentioned earlier, the only other district that allows for any sort of manufacturing use is the commercial corridor district, and that wasn't really an option here at this site, given that the commercial corridor is sort of particular to the Pylon Road corridor. Oh, uh, we also looked at the conference of plan for a couple of policies. Uh, chapter 9 within the economic development element, policy 2.4, uh, it talks about adding industrial land uses to the city to add to the industrial base. Uh, so it does meet that, uh, that sort of standard within the comprehensive of plan. And then also we looked at chapter four, future land use element policy 1.15, which has the table of all the land uses and district, zoning districts that are compatible with each other. And we mentioned uh, a couple of times that the industrial district is compatible with the mixed use future land use designation. So our recommendation, based upon analysis of the Land Development Code and the Comprehensive Plan, is to recommend approval of the rezone to industrial uh, zoning on the site. And we have not received any uh, correspondence uh, say, stating that they're for this or against this. We did get one phone call, just sort of an of a informative nature, but they did not provide any sort of stance on whether they would support or not support this rezoning case. And I'm here for any further questions. Thank you. I, I have one question. Um, can you put on the record um, 
what some of the uses in the Andalusian Industrial Park would be, just uh, just to give a little bit of context for this application. Uh, so you find there's a lot of contractors within there. Uh, you have uh, you do have some research and development that goes along in there. I visited one um, one site where they're doing sort of sort of like uh, algae testing, things of that nature. Uh, lots of manufacturing where they're sort of assembling things, putting them together, and then shipping them off. Uh, you have some wholesalers that can go within there. I know you have a uh, British Foods, uh, they distribute, you know, uh, foods across the country. Uh, so it's just sort of things where it's a lot of, a lot of manufacturing, some research, um, there is some automotive repair within there as well. And then also you have some uh, developments that have sort of acted as like um, garages for people to come in, come in and work on their cars and do things where they're not uh, within the sight of the public and they can kind of make noise without having to affect any nearby homes. Thank you. I have no other questions. This is a public hearing. Are there members of the public who wish to provide input or testimony? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the applicant. Could we have you up, please, sir? Thank you. Uh, do you have any further testimony based upon Mr. Boyko's testimony? I do not. Do you wish to incorporate his testimony into yours as well? Yes, please. Thank you. Any other, anything else? Okay. Thank you Thank for you. your time. All right, Mr. Boyko. Um, did you want to incorporate your staff report into your presentation? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, I have no other questions. Um, this seems like an excellent um, uh, fit for this area of Cape Coral. Um, I know industrial uses are always a little bit of a concern about where do they go. Obviously, the Cape needs to have um, something in that category that fulfills the needs of the residents and businesses here. Um, and um, I think you've done a very thorough presentation. Um, I think staff has done excellent analysis regarding the uh, potential impact on, on, um, on non-conforming residential uses. Um, and it, it, it's, always, it's always kind of a question, where, where can they go, especially in a place like Cape Coral, which has so very much extensive uh, residential properties. Um, so uh, I, I applaud you for how well you've put this together. Obviously, as, as you've said, as Mr. Boyko said, and as I've also referenced, the use is not uh, appropriate to be considered in the rezoning. Um, but I appreciate your comments. I will recommend that the rezoning go forward as requested. Um, as I'm fond of saying, time is money. So I will attempt to get my recommendation out as quickly as possible. I'm sure that you're aware that this goes in front of city council and I, I have no idea what the scheduling of that is, but I'm sure that Mr. Boyko can keep you apprised of that. All right. Oh, with those comments, I'm concluding, um, I am closing this case. And um, that concludes our hearings for today. Um, the next item of business is to announce the date and time of the next hearings. That will be Tuesday, July 11th, 2023 at 9 a.m. here in council chambers. I hope everyone has a safe and festive 4th of July. Thank you.